Hey everyone, Regiblend here and in this video we're gonna be looking at how to make your trampoline in Blender. World Blender. So first we delete the default cube and the lamp. Add in a plane. Actually two planes because we'll be doing um the rectangular or squarical type of trampoline and the should I call it a circular type of trampoline here. Yeah. The regular ones for kids. To start this off we'll first add a subdivision surface modifier and then increase the faces here yeah, and apply it when it looks like a circle but it's not actually a circle it's like uh, how I call it is uh, it's weird it's novel something <laughs> I, can't, I can't name that shape but basically we just turned a plane which is a square to a circle so it's gonna have some some bad thoughts so now we're gonna be using the tool which is which is yeah it's famous, it's known, it's called the loop tool. You have to go to the edit preferences, I just did that now. So basically, you use the loop tool to make that uh, square a little bit more circular. And the other one, the trampoline, we're going to be adding, uh, yes, more subdivisions. More subdivisions to it, in order to, you know, you need more, uh, like, vertices to deal with, in order to bend the cloth, uh, the cloth modifier. Uh, no worries, we're going to be adding vertex cube because you don't want the whole cloth to be falling down. You want it to only be the edges. Here, because I'm doing the voiceover, I made a very, very big mistake and I don't want to cause it because we're going to learn from what I just did now. <laughs> so, basically, I'm busy adding two vertex groups on the same objects. Well, yeah, on different objects, they have different vertex groups. Thinking that this vertex group the two vertices groups to screw the show when I click these two objects. So basically I just click the circle now and yeah. I have to add another vertex group and assign it to the edge because the edge is basically where you don't want to fall down. You want it to be hold, held up like by the strings or something. Like a trampoline randomly or uh, normally is. So you assign that to a vertex group. Um yeah I'm deleting it right now. <laughs> wow. So yeah, I've just assigned it back. So we're back in business. So you assign the edges, basically, you know, control, uh, shift, scroll stuff, click the edges. And yeah, we're good with that. Now, it's time for the cloth. Cloth, you would click the cloth. Uh, instead of the rectangle, the, the square. So click the cloth modifier and that stuff. And I increased that to about two, um, to a higher number then you select you go to shape then select uh, the vertex group we just created and I disabled self um, self this one self collision I disabled self collision yeah basically that's very 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 important to disable it because basically you're not going to be in case you're going to be like let's see same objects, same cloth, having the same cloth, is it so the same cloth, similar settings in the cloth. You have to enable self collision or maybe you don't want the cloth to touch itself. Basically you have to enable self collision at that point. But now I don't want to use self collision. So that's what I'm gonna enable the self collision. So yes, so we're gonna be doing the um, animated one. Yeah first. Yeah. So vertex mass is a very major thing to um, let's say all the vertices, all these tiny tiny little bases you see there um, have very huge masses of like 2.5, 2.5 stuff. You see the things bouncing up as you play, as you play button. So now you add in a circ um Atmosphere, yeah, I always call a sphere a circle, a circle a sphere, Major, <laughs> majorly because, well, you make mistakes sometimes. Basically, you add in a sphere and add a collision to it. And since we didn't add, like, self-collision to the object, we're gonna be animating this sphere. Oh, God, I said it again. We're gonna be animating this sphere, yeah. So, you see, I'm um, adding some keyframes on first one the 20th frame and the 40th frame basically 
it goes down, then it comes back up. Uh, let's watch it. Yeah, you see, it stretches the cloth, but um, it doesn't look that realistic. It's just going down, coming back up like an animation, something like that. Like, if you can do that times a that number, like double that, double that, it look, actually look like something is bouncing up. Uh, I didn't actually do that, but man, it looked like something is really, really bouncing, like, uh, yeah. But we have to increase the the quality of the uh, of the of the cloth physics, so you can look more like a cloth and not like, well, well, I don't even know how to name that. It's like protruding gamma or something. So basically, it's look more like a cloth. Another thing you might add to add some smoothness to it is the subdivision. Yeah, I got it correctly. Subdivision surface modifier. Basically, I just did it now to so subdivision surface modifier as like a tinge of smoothness to that particular cloth. Now you see I'm doing the. Oh, well, this voiceover is really, really amazing. Now I'm doing the uh, the different styles. Talking about the let's see, ball falling on a cloth. Like basic, basic style. And I'll be testing currently because I recorded this since I'll be testing the pressure pressure button just playing around with that just for some time okay um after testing um time for the real thing is uh, the internal internal space basically this an object an object is cramping yeah but to open up like a ball, it has to have like internal springs inside. But you notice one thing happening here is the trampoline itself is also having internal springs. Like it's having, um, it's coming up. It's like a let's see, a bag. Oh, let's see, uh, a bag is falling from from the sky. It's also coming up, stuff like that. So that's what we don't want. Basically, the internal springs you can either play on a separate objects having the same cloth modifiers, but like that in this video, we're not going to be doing something like that. That was basically it for the internal springs, and we'll be going on to try doing Ico spheres because UV spheres. The one wrong thing with UV spheres is they have uh, a edge. There's a particular the top and the bottom. They always squeeze together every time we do this cloth kind of simulation stuff. So basically, we're going to be using Icosphere to, um, no, no, let's touch it a little bit. Basically, when you use Icosphere, you actually get a better result. And we'll be get there in a minute. As you can see, there's no wrinkling on top of the Icosphere. The Icosphere is just an Icosphere. I'm looking like a ball. Looking like a real football, actually. So basically, that's, that's it. That's it for the trampoline of the, the Seculus trampoline. And we've tested enough, tested a lot of things. So, technically, this is the end of this video. I hope you liked it as you watched it, because, of course, I did it because I made a lot of mistakes while recording this, obviously. So, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, ring the notification bell, subscribe to the channel, because that will really be bouncy. And I'll see you in the next video, uncertain on when that will come out. So, Bye.